We're going to finish up our related rates examples now in modeling with triangles. As we're working through this first question and any of the triangle questions, the first thing I would remind you to do is to draw a picture. So we didn't really have to draw a picture when we were working with the circles questions because there's really only one measure in a circle, which is the radius, and the rest of it is a formula, either finding the area or the volume. In this question and in the next, we're dealing with triangles, and so as you can see, we have three sides of a triangle, which all are going to have different measures, and sometimes we'll be dealing with the angles of a triangle as well. Now in this question, we're dealing with measures, and it's important to understand that. We're not looking at the angle measure, we're looking at distances or lengths. Now the reason I make that, uh, or point that out to you, is because when you're doing triangles questions, you're either going to be dealing with the Pythagorean theorem, which relates the sides of a right triangle, or you're going to be dealing with trig functions, which relates the angles with a side or sides. So keep that distinction in mind as we work through this question. So let's get started, keeping in mind that again, I'm going to have a set of static values and I'm going to have a set of variable values. So I'm going to use S to represent distance, and that's the hypotenuse. I'm going to use H to represent the height, or actually let's use A for altitude. And then let's just use B down here for this distance. Or you could use X, it really doesn't matter what you use as long as you keep them all the same. Which means that if I have an S, I should also have a DS over DT, a DA over DT, and a db over dt. And again, those will change based on whatever variables or letters you chose to represent each side. Now let's read the question. An airplane is flying at an altitude of six miles. So the altitude is six miles. That's A. That's how high the plane is. So if you can imagine, here's a plane. I know I'm such an artist. You are welcome. So there's my plane, and the altitude is six miles. And again, they're not giving me dA over dt, but we know that it's flying at a constant altitude. It's going straight ahead, right? So the actual dA over dt is going to be zero because the altitude isn't going to change. Then it says the distance from the radar station, so there's some sort of radar station here. Again, it's staggering how awesome my abilities are. The radar station is, the distance is decreasing at a rate of 400 miles per hour. So this is a rate. If we're talking about the distance from the radar station, we're talking about ds over dt. This is 400 miles per hour. So we're not talking about ground distance, we're talking about this plane getting closer to this radar station. And then it says when the distance is 10 miles. So when the distance is 10 miles, that is a static value. So again, that's S, 10 miles. And what is the speed of the airplane? So the speed of the airplane would be the change in the B value because we would measure that distance right there or that speed, the change in the uh, distance speed. So do I have all of my values? Almost. Here I know that A is six and S is 10, but what's B? So again, I can use 6 squared plus b squared is equal to 10 squared in order to solve for b. So that gives me b squared, oops, b squared, not 6 squared. Work with me, please. My pen is not working with me. Okay, so b squared equals 10 squared, which was 100, minus 36 squared. I'm sorry, six squared, which is 36, which gives me 64, which means B is eight. And of course, I only need the positive value there. So now I'm actually ready to solve. Now, so the question is, what am I going to differentiate? 
um, with respect to time. What function or value or formula am I going to differentiate with respect to time? Well, again, even though I've already used the Pythagorean theorem down here with actual values, the Pythagorean theorem is what I want to use to differentiate. So I'm going to write a squared plus b squared equals s squared. And again, I used a, b, and s in my picture. Your uh, labels might be different than mine, but it's the same idea. If I differentiate this, I'm going to get 2a and then dA over dt plus 2b db over dt equals 2s ds over dt. And of course, it makes sense for me to reduce everything by 2 because why make extra work for myself? So now let's start plugging in values I know. A is 6 and dA over dt is 0. B is 8. dB over dt is unknown. Again, that's 8 and dB over dt. And then S is 10 and dS over dt is 400. So from here, I should just be able to solve. Again, 6 times 0 is 0. So I have 8 dB over dt, dB over dt is equal to 4,000. If I take 4,000 divided by 8, I get dB over dt is equal to 500. Again, keeping in mind all of our um, units of measure, I have meters and then I, I'm sorry, miles, and then I have miles per hour. And of course, if I'm looking at dB over dt, that's the change in distance with respect to time, which is a speed, which would of course be miles per hour. So my solution is 500 miles per hour. I saved the best one for last. This one is a doozy. And so I'm going to work through this one with you. Again, we're going to use that same process or that same idea, but you're going to find that this one's much more complicated. And the reason for that is the question being asked, which is find the rate of change of the elevation of the camera. So in this case, um, and you probably haven't read the whole question yet, essentially what I have is I have a rocket ship I know, I love my little drawings, I'm sure, as much as you do. So I have my little rocket ship, and it's going to be um, rocketing into the air straight up. And I also have a camera over here. So I've got my little camera guy, and what they're saying is, right now that camera is pointing straight ahead. But as that rocket ship is up in the air, the angle of this camera is going to change. So it's obviously going to point straight and then as the um, rocket is moving up, the angle is going to move up. And that's why this one is difficult is we're going to be dealing with theta or whatever you want to call your angle. So theta represents the angle of the camera. So let's write down things that we know based on the information given to us. We're going to call this S because typically we use S for distance. And we're given that S is 50t squared. And so um, we'll come back to that in a moment at, at the exact moment in time for S. And then T is the number of seconds since, since liftoff. The camera is 2,000 feet from the launch pad. So this guy is 2,000 feet, which you'll find um, isn't going to change, right? We're not going to move the camera, we're just going to tilt it differently. So if we needed a d theta, I'm sorry, a d x over dt, that value would be zero. You're going to find as we go through this, we're not going to use that value in our equation. And we also need a ds over dt. I'm sorry, I should have written that in gold as I normally do. Getting my color scheme all mixed up. 
so dx over dt would be 0. ds over dt would be the derivative of the s function, which of course would be 2 times 50, which is 100t. And s, of course, is 50t squared. And we'll talk about s at a specific moment in time as we continue to work through this question. And the only other thing that I'm missing is anything on this side. Um, and I'll come back to that as we need to. Um, the other thing is, of course, I have theta. Then, of course, oh, where's my gold color? d theta over dt is the question mark. That's what we're trying to solve for, because the question says the rate of change of elevation of the camera. So let's get started now. We want to find the derivative with respect to time. And the question is, what am I finding the derivative of? I don't have any formula except for s and ds, and that's not what we're looking for. We need a function that's going to relate theta to values given in our question. And so if you'll remember back to trigonometry, hopefully, we know that if we have theta and we have the side opposite theta and the side adjacent to theta, that is the function tangent theta equals s over 2,000. So that is the function that we are going to use. That is what we're going to differentiate. So tan theta equals s over 2,000. Now, if I want to differentiate this, I need to know what is the derivative of tangent. The derivative of tangent is secant squared theta. And then, of course, we are differentiating with respect to time. So that's d theta over dt, which, of course, is what I'm solving for. If I find the derivative of s over 2,000, that is 1 over 2,000. And we are differentiating with respect to time, so ds dt. So far, hopefully you're with me. Now, I need to get d theta over dt by itself. So d theta over dt, I've got my 1 over 2,000. ds over dt, I'm going to replace with 100t. And then d theta over, I'm sorry, secant squared theta, I'm going to divide each side by secant squared theta. So technically what I have is 1 over secant squared theta, but I don't like that. So I'm going to rewrite that as cosine squared theta, because that's what 1 over secant squared theta is. So this is cosine squared theta or cosine theta squared. And that's going to make it much easier as I continue. Now, why does it make it easier? Because I need to replace cosine theta with something. So going back over to my picture, if I'm trying to find the cosine of an angle, the cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of theta is adjacent, which is 2,000 over hypotenuse. So what's the hypotenuse? So I'm going to actually use the Pythagorean theorem, even though that's not the function that I'm deriving. So I need to say that s squared, so I'm going to move this because I'm going to run out of room and it's going to get confusing. s squared plus 2,000 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And so the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of s squared plus 2,000 squared. And please know that that is not equal to s plus 2,000. So don't do that. You, you hopefully know better than that. Well, we can't do that. It's, that's not the square root. So I'm dealing with s squared plus 2,000 squared for h, which means that cosine of theta is equal to 2,000 over the square root of s squared plus 2,000 squared. 
So that's what I'm going to plug in over here. So on my next step, I've got d theta over dt. I've got 1 over 2,000. I've got 100t, and for t, um, I'm going to go ahead and plug in a value because it says at 10 seconds after liftoff. So I'm going to t put in 100 times 10. And then cosine theta is this guy. So I've got 2,000 over the square root of s squared plus 2,000 squared, quantity squared. So from here, let's see what else I can do. I know that if I have 2,000 squared, that's 2,000 times 2,000, and I've got one 2,000 down here. So this 2,000 is going to cancel with one of the 2,000s up here. So let's just sort of rearrange my squareds so I don't confuse anybody. That's a squared, and that's a squared. So what I've done is I've canceled one of the 2,000s. So keeping up with what I have, I have 100 times 10, so I have, I have 1 times 1,000, which is 1,000. And then in my fraction, I've got a 2,000 left on the top. And on the bottom, I have, notice this is the square root and squared. Those things cancel out. So on the bottom denominator, I have s squared plus 2,000 squared. So from here, remember, I'm just trying to find a number, a value. So the only thing holding me back is s squared. So now let's look at s. S is 50t squared. We are at 10 seconds. So if I'm looking at S of 10, essentially, we're saying 50, oops, times 10 squared. S of 10 is 50 times 10 squared. So that gives me 50 times 100 or 5,000. So that's what's going to go in here is 5,000 squared. So d theta over dt is 1,000, and I could go ahead and multiply that out. So that would be 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. And then this is 5,000 squared plus 2,000 squared. And at this point, I'm just going to use my calculator to simplify and simplify and simplify and end up with a reduced fraction of 2 29th and we're dealing with the change of a angle of an angle so this is in radians per second so I told you that one was going to be a rough one there's a lot of moving parts on that one um, so hopefully you were able to keep up um, go back and watch it again try another question on your own then watch this one again just to make sure that you got it right up next, we'll take a look at extrema of a function on an interval.